Defeat the standard traction control, and the Super will take you to 60 miles per hour in a torrid 5 seconds flat, helped by a slick shifting 6 speed with throws as short as a Formula Ford's. Tremendous grip and extremely predictable handling manners make it easy to extract the most from this chassis, putting it near the top of the group for overall handling and control. But be careful when exiting tight corners, the tail can and will come out under power. From its enormous front air intakes to the clusters of tiny taillights under a towering F40 style wing, Toyota Super is a powerful styling statement. It also has muscle beneath its hood to match those looks. A 3 liter twin turbo inline 6 engine makes 320 horsepower, which ties it with the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 for the most powerful Japanese production sports car made. The Super's chassis employs no special gimmicks, just the basics for world class handling. Like all the Supers before it, this version uses an inline six with a cast iron block and aluminum head. The twin camshaft, sequential twin turbos, and a jumbo-sized intercooler help bolster output to 320 horsepower. Despite weight-saving efforts such as hollow fiber carpeting, dished head bolts, and a glass sphere-filled rear wing, the Super is no bantam weight. Our scales show a healthy 3,450 pounds. The origin of the Supra dates back to 1971, when Toyota introduced the Celica as an economical four-cylinder sports coupe. It was eight years later that Toyota decided to create a new, more powerful version of the Celica, outfitted with a 2.6-liter inline-six power plant derived from the Cressida's engine. The new model, called the Supra, enabled Toyota to better compete with other popular economy-minded sports cars such as the Mazda RX-7 and Nissan 280ZX. The Supra underwent rather conservative body style and mechanical changes through its next two generations. But in 1993, Toyota unveiled a radical redesign. The new Supra Turbo's performance capabilities put it at the top of the pack of Japanese production sports cars and squarely in contention with Europe and America's best.
Congratulations, you have won the race. You've got a top 10 time for this track. Honda shook the automotive world by its lapels in 1991 with the introduction of the NSX, a 168-mile-per-hour exotic with an all-aluminum unit body and a 270-horsepower mid-mounted V6. Not only was it quick, agile, and forgiving to the inexperienced driver, the NSX established a new level of refinement for exotic cars. It's easy to get in and out of. It's quiet at cruise. Its trunk will hold two golf bags and its outward vision is superb for a mid-engine car. While it may not be the most powerful exotic, the NSX's trim 3,000-pound curb weight makes the most of the power it has got, with 0 to 60 runs of less than 6 seconds as proof. Forgiving and predictable are words that come to mind, with the driver needing to do something really foolish to get this car to spin. The steering feedback is so immediate and precise, it almost feels as if you're holding a tie rod in each hand. Powerful anti-lock brakes give the NSX the most stopping power of the bunch. Honda eats 270 horsepower out of its 4-cam 3-liter V6, using such pricey metals as aluminum and titanium, and its ingenious VTEC system which employs two distinct camshaft lobe profiles to get both a smooth idle and excellent power at high RPM. The result allows this V6 to pull melodiously to 8,000 RPM, making smooth power without the vibration and commotion you'd associate with some cars in its class. With the exception of a steel crossbeam that supports the steering column, the NSX's structure is composed entirely of aluminum extrusions, stampings, and castings. Honda, already famous as the world's biggest and most successful motorcycle manufacturer, displayed its first road car at the 1962 Tokyo Auto Show, a small roadster with an air-cooled four-cylinder engine. At about the same time, Honda's Formula One effort was hitting full stride. It peaked when Richie Ginther drove the shrieking V12 Honda Formula One car to victory in the 1965 Mexican Grand Prix. This was just a taste of things to come, as Honda's competition record in Formula One during the late 80s was unmatched. Their technical leadership in the design of both V10 and V12 engines earned them numerous victories and a reputation for building some of the most advanced racing machinery to date. It was a logical next step to enter the exotic car market by playing off its strong reputation in Formula One. In preparing to build the NSX, Honda constructed one of the most technologically advanced manufacturing facilities in the world in Tochigi, Japan. In 1991, this plant started building the NSX, the world's first series-produced sports car with an all-aluminum frame and body.
are ready and rolling. Action move. Wow. And action. Wow. Holy cow, does ever go fast? Coming down is when you want me to punch it. That's yeah, we'll do that. Do it. Okay. But I want to do it like a uh, rocket. Wow! Okay, I got it. I guess that's what I got to do. 